Let's talk about the parts of the cell. Now, the most important part of the cell is the nucleus. Okay, if I could move my whole mitochondria right here, we'll come back to them later. Okay, the nucleus has some very specific parts, and I'll kind of identify those as we go. But start with this. I know on your uh, sheet, you have a big rectangle for drawing your nucleus. Okay, start with a big circle and then a smaller circle inside of it because uh, each nucleus has its own membrane called a nuclear envelope. Okay, and then you're going to cut little holes in it with your eraser or your finger in this case. Okay. There's little tunnels where things can get into, very small things can get into and out of the nucleus. Those are called nuclear pores. Okay, and then in the center is something called the nucleolus. Okay, and that's where ribosomes are actually made. Okay, but the whole thing together, that's known as the nucleus. It's the control center, it's the town hall, okay, it's, uh, it's where we make all the decisions. Now, the nucleus doesn't actually do anything inside here other than to make copies of its DNA or make uh, little templates of its DNA that it can send out through the nuclear pores and so it gets outside of the nuclear envelope to other parts of the cell where it can actually be made into a protein, okay? But the important thing that you understand here is that inside the nucleus is our genetic material, our DNA, which is protected, okay? So then we have the nucleolus in the center, the nuclear envelope, which is the membrane around it, and then nuclear pores, which allow that genetic material, those copies, to actually leave. The DNA will never leave, okay? Good. Cellular structure and support. Uh, there's two parts that make up something called the cytoskeleton. So if you think about your body and how you have a skeleton that supports you and holds you upright, stuff like that, uh, your cells have something similar. They have what's called microtubules and microfilaments. Microtubules are the ones that help to keep organelles in place. So if you can kind of picture Lucas Oil Stadium that we've been to a couple times, uh, if you picture like the girders and stuff that hold up this roof, or that push against the walls and things like that, or maybe like an inside of a building where you can see exposed um, metal parts and stuff like that that kind of hold it up. That would be the microtubules in this case. On the flip side, we have microfilaments that actually help the cell to move and to bend and to change shape. Okay, so microtubules, microfilaments make up the cytoskeleton. Now, when a cell moves, usually it's moving because, especially if it's an animal cell, it's dividing. And we have special things called centrioles, which help us with cell division. Uh, centrioles, they kind of seem like they're hard to draw, but they're really not. Kind of make like a, a pow, like an explosion type thing. And then off of each one of the lines, okay, draw a line similar to it, and then make that same shape on the opposite side. And then you just kind of connect with lines. That's what a centriole looks like. Okay? So again, make the pow, and then diagonal lines, half a pow on the other end, and then connect the lines. Okay, that's what a centriole looks like. Uh, the cytoplasm is like a jello-y substance inside the cell. It's got some viscosity. It's got some thickness to it. It helps to give the cell shape and hold things in place. It's also the site of all the chemical reactions inside the cell. Okay. Now, for packaging and storing, this is important here, okay? There's going to be three organelles that are only found in plant cells. And lucky you, they all start with the letter C, okay? So if I can draw my plant cell here. Inside the plant cell, the largest part of a plant cell, I'm going to use black to draw it here. Okay, I should use blue, but my blue is fading. The largest part of a plant cell, which takes up most of its shape, or most of its inside, is known as the central vacuole. And what it does is it holds water and other minerals for the plant cell. So if it's ever in a situation where it doesn't have a lot of water, it has a resource that it can go to. So think of it like a water tower or a reservoir uh, in this city. Okay? But what it also does is that pressure from the water, so if you think about like when you fill up a water balloon, how the balloon gets bigger and bigger and bigger, well think about if I had that balloon contained inside a container, it would start to push so hard on that container that it might even cause the container to burst. Okay, That central vacuole does the same thing, it pushes on the sides of the cell walls of the plant cell to help give this plant shape, which causes it to stand upright. Okay? That's how plants can stand without a skeleton or anything like that, they just use water pressure in order to do it. So what happens if I don't water my plant? Well, it starts to wilt. And that's because there's no longer pressure, enough pressure to hold that plant cell up. Okay? In all cells, there are something known as vesicles. Uh, there are little bubbles inside the cell that hold different materials. Maybe they're transporting materials. But the important thing here is that you understand that they're made of the same things as your cell membrane. So this vesicle is the green parts, and you'll notice it has dashed lines. We'll learn about what those are a little bit later. Now, the Golgi apparatus, the G is packing. <laughs> the Golgi apparatus is like the UPS store of the cell. So think about if I needed to ship things from one city to another, 
Okay, I would go to the UPS store, I would give them my package, okay, and then they would take it and ship it, put it in a box, ship it in a special way off to another city. The Golgi apparatus does something similar, okay? It kind of looks like folded pancakes, like pancakes sitting on top of one another. Okay, but if you imagine a protein, I'm gonna use red to identify my protein here, okay? I imagine a protein coming from somewhere else inside the cell, okay? With that protein, uh, that vesicle that's containing that ribosome will actually attach to the Golgi apparatus, give it its ribosome, or give it its protein. Protein kind of passes through all the different parts of it, and then it gets packaged in another specialized compartment, which then can actually leave the cell. And we'll talk about how that process happens a little bit later on. But it's important to remember that the Golgi apparatus is the UPS store. It packages and ships protein. The G is packing. Now, just like any big city, there's going to be trash, there's going to be cleanup. Okay, so who does the cleanup? Well, we have guys called lysosomes to do that. They can break down food, materials, and waste. They can even kill old cell parts. Uh, believe it or not, when you were a baby, you had webbed fingers when you lived inside your mommy. Okay, you had skin in between each of these. And what happened to kill that, those skin cells is that your lysosomes actually attacked the nucleuses of their own cell. And what that did is it killed the cells, but the advantage of that is that it gets rid of that webbing in between your fingers. So people that have little webs left between their fingers or their toes, their lysosomes, all their lysosomes didn't work the way they were supposed to, and they left some of that skin behind. Okay, so that's what lysosomes are for. Now they can do that process because they're able to, oh my gosh, what's my camera doing? <laughs> they could do that process because they contain digestive enzymes, and now we just learned what enzymes were in the last section or last unit. So you know that enzymes can help speed up a chemical reaction. In this case, that chemical reaction is to break down cell parts or different uh, organic material. There's also something called peroxisomes inside your cell. Now, these two are hard to identify because they just kind of look like bubbles. So I always label them as either an L or a P. And you may want to do that when you do your labeling and your coloring later on, okay? But they contain catalase to get rid of hydrogen peroxide, okay? Now, let's talk about protein. I keep using that word protein and things that make protein. Well, why do I do that? Well, proteins are important because they make up all the important parts of your body, the important parts of your cell. They give special functions to each of the body parts or to the different cells, okay? So who actually makes those proteins? It's these guys known as ribosomes. Now, we learned that ribosomes were made in the nucleus, okay, in a special part of this nucleus called the nucleolus, but they actually don't have a membrane. Uh, which is why we can say that organelles are only found in eukaryotic cells, even though ribosomes, as you'll notice if you look at your three labels here, okay, ribosomes are found in both animal, plant, and prokaryotic cells. Well, that's because since they don't have a membrane of their own, that we can kind of, we don't really classify them as an organelle. Okay, they'd have a function that's specific for the cell, but it, uh, they kind of fall into their own little category because all they're really made of is something called RNA, which is a template made of DNA Okay, so it's not actual DNA, but it's like DNA, and that's turned and shaped in a specific way so that it can make proteins and use that, okay? We'll talk more about that later on in the year. Don't you worry about that, okay? Now, where do those ribosomes live? Those ribosomes live on something called the endoplasmic reticulum, okay? So if I draw my nucleus, again, it's a double membrane. The endoplasmic reticulum is like the super highway of the cell, so if you think of like 465 and 65, 69, all those things coming into the city here, the ER does the, kind of the same thing, okay? It's kind of like folds inside the cell that allow information or proteins or whatever to pass from one side of the cell to the other without a lot of restriction, without having to go through that soupy jelly cytoplasm. You can actually just pass straight through this endoplasmic reticulum. So if you can imagine, information from the nucleus now leaves the nuclear pore, okay, goes through the ER, kind of goes through and then finally gets off at its exit to get where it needs to go. Maybe it's the Golgi maybe it's a ribosome or something like that, okay? Now the reason we call this one rough ER is because all over its surface, it looks like it has little zits, okay? And those are the ribosomes, okay? So I know you're drawing, you're drawing little sketches for each one of these. You might wanna do these two together. Draw your rough ER and then just put dots all over them and then label those as ribosomes, okay? So that's the rough ER. Now, likewise, there's actual smooth ER Smooth ER does not have ribosomes on its surface. Uh, that's why we call it smooth. It doesn't look rough like the rough ER does because it has the ribosomes. But the smooth ER, besides carrying materials through the cell, it also serves to help detoxify the cell, okay? Now, a lot of times you'll see it drawn as like tubes, connected tubes, and that's fine as well if you want to do that, okay? Or if that's too complicated for you, if that's too complicated for you, you could just draw more of the ER like this 
but just don't put the dots on it, and that would make it smooth ER. And I know my picture is a little hard to see because it's a whiteboard and it's far away, but I'm sure you get the picture. Okay, now, one of the most important organelles is mitochondria, and that's not just because it makes energy for you. It converts glucose to ATP in a process called cellular respiration. The other reason it's important is because I'm going to be a while. Okay, the other reason it's important, Mr. Fulton just stopped by. The other reason it's important is because it was actually the first organelle. Mitochondria have DNA inside of them, which is different than the DNA in the rest of your cells. Okay, it's called mitochondrial DNA, and you actually only get it from your mother. So we can actually track your family history just with the DNA from your mitochondria. But mitochondria do their own division. Uh, they kind of do all their own thing, but they, what they do for you is that they give your cells ATP by using their breaking down glucose, okay? So that's the mitochondria. It was like, again, it was one of the first organelles because it was a prokaryote all its own. If you imagine two prokaryotes living inside one another, okay, that is what happened. That's known as endosymbiosis, and we'll talk about that earlier. Uh, hopefully we talked about that earlier today. Uh, the other organelle that gives some eukaryotes energy is the chloroplast. Chloroplast is the site of photosynthesis. It kind of looks like an oval, and then inside are little stacks of coins. Okay, so if I'm taking like a cylinder, I just make little stacks of coins. Okay, or you can just make ovals if stacks of coins are too hard for you. Okay. We'll talk about what these are a little bit later in the year, okay? But just know the chloroplast only found in plant cells. It's another one of those three C's. Okay, only found in plant cells. It's the site of photosynthesis, which means it's converting sunlight carbon dioxide, and water into sugar and oxygen, okay? All right, we're almost there. I know, we're running out of time here. I'm already at 12.30. Okay, cell boundaries, the cell membrane, it's like the bouncer, controls what enters and leaves the cell. Maybe it's like a gate or a fence outside the city, okay? Controls what enters and leaves. Uh, cell wall, it's the third of our three C's, only found in plant cells. And again, it's, help, it's used to help support the plant cell, okay? It gives it shape. Now, it's important to understand that not all cell walls are rectangular. We learned about prokaryotes yesterday, and we learned that prokaryotes have a cell wall as well, and they kind of have a capsule shape or an oval shape. Okay, plant cells are rectangular for a reason. It's part of their evolution, okay? and it's because they're so tightly packed together okay, to give them that shape, and that's why they have that shape. Um, the other thing, important thing here is that the cell walls are made of something called cellulose. Hopefully you remember that from the last unit. Cellulose is the crunchy part of like carrots and celery and stuff like that. But that's what the cell walls are made of. They're made out of that fiber material to help protect it and keep it strong. All right, almost there. Two to go. Locomotion. So we're talking about movement now. Cilia are short hair-like projections on the cell. They help it move or they help things move around it. Like in your respiratory tract, you have lots of cells that have cilia on them. Okay, so if I can imagine... All these cells lined up together, okay? And what they do is as air passes through, I guess it, whether it's going it's inhaling or exhaling, okay? But as air passes through, okay, these cilia help to move mucus that's inside your respiratory tract, okay? Help to move it back against the, in the opposite direction, and then it catches any forward material that ends up coming through your, in your airway, okay? So little dust particles or bad things that are trying to get through there, they get stuck to your mucus. That's why it has that sticky feeling to it. And it actually gets sent back out to either be digested or you expel it or whatever it is, okay? So that's where you can find cilia inside a human cell. But other cells just have cilia all around them. If you look in the bottom left corner, you can see an example of a cell that has cilia all over it. And then the other type of locomotion uh, or vehicle for locomotion is known as a flagella. Flagella are the little whip-like tails. They move in circles. They go, okay, even though they, I know, they have to have those sound effects, right? <laughs> okay, so just, you can have one or two, okay, depending on the type of cell that you are. There's only one cell in the human body that has a flagella, and only half the people that watch this video have them. Okay, I'm sure you can figure out what that is. But anyway, flagella are the tail of that cell. Okay, I think... That about covers it. Yes, it does. Okay. Hope you learned something today. Please feel free to go back through here. I just went over 15 minutes. Sorry that it took so long. It's a lot of information, I know. Fill in your chart. Check your work. Ask people around you for help. Have good sketches because it's going to help you identify things later on. Okay. Have a great day. Go Irish.